All right, one second. Right there. As you can see, folks, I got the first pick correct, but I got the outcome correct. He actually got a knockout on that fight or TKO because he got an injury. Naimov won that fight. And I think he was going to win that fight regardless of the injury. Um, he he was looking good until that injury, man. Naimov, he's someone that in this featherweight division can give some people problems. What do you think about this fight? Yeah, um, I called Naimov by TKO, but it wasn't the TKO that we expected. Um, Eric Silva uh, got caught behind his ankle, and um, that was the end of the fight early. All right, next fight, guys. We just talked about this fight. Felipe Dos Santos defeating Victor Altamarino Moreno via split decision. Very close, very fun fight. Honestly, man, I really think, even though I had a bet on it, Victor Altamarino did enough to win that fight. So what do you think about this fight? Yeah, so um, live betting in the third round, Victor Altamarino was a minus 225 with a, a minute 30 seconds left in the fight. So um yeah, it was a robbery. You bro, you should have cashed, bro. But it is what it is, bro. Next fight, guys got the pick correct, got the outcome wrong. Went uh, went by submission. The fight ended by submission. Ronaldo Rodriguez going over Dennis Bonder, man. Dennis Bonder, not too good. I think he should be cut from the UFC to be honest. I think this is his what third third fight he's lost in the UFC. So Ronaldo Rodriguez, very impressive in that fight, and hopefully he can do something in this division. What do you think about this fight? Yeah, man. Um, I don't know if um, our viewers remember last week when I was doing my breakdown. Uh, go back, Dennis Bondar. I, I said a guy first time he's a um, he's this the, he's the third time he's been a favorite, and he's zero and two as a favorite. So yeah, man, you had to take the lazy boy uh, Rodriguez and Bondar. He needs to be out of here. Next fight, guys. Got the pick correct. Got the outcome correct. Fariz Zayam winning a decision over Claudio Poyez. Um, That was a close fight. Claudio Poyez did have him in some trouble a couple of times with some submissions. But overall, Fariz Zayam did out-cardio him in that fight. And that's what won him the fight was the cardio. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, Claudio was really just holding on for dear life. Versus uh, ZM, he actually was trying to do damage. So um, good, good decision. And uh, yeah, man, that was a uh, that was minus one fifteen. That was a good ticket if you guys cashed on that one. Next fight, guys. I told you he was gonna submit him again, and he solidified it. At this fight, that controversy is over. Edgar Chires defeating Daniel Lacerda via submission in the very first round. What do you think about that fight, bro? Yeah, man, I thought that fight was really fun for how long it lasted. They they were being trying to be patient, but then as soon as Edgar got his hands on Daniel, it was over because, you know, he tried to take him down. And um, Daniel Lacerda, just, he does not know his positions on the ground. He just didn't know what Edgar was trying to do. He got right into this triangle and got choked out. But I want to see him in, a, in another Next fight, guys, Jesus Algalar. Defeating Mantus Mendonts in a very close, very controversial decision. This is another split decision fight. And Mantus Mendonts, bro, I thought he was going to win that fight. I thought, and he did it, man. Very close, very controversial. We all know they gave it to him because he's Mexican. Not, let's not lie. <laughs> I agree with you. I definitely felt like um, Mendoza, like we said, had did enough. And, um, yeah, man, but I, I'm going to bet on Mendoza's next time. He's not going to lose three times in a row. Next fight, guys. He was my dog of the card, and he almost got it done until he got caught up in that submission. I'm talking about Christian Quinones losing to Hione Barcelos via submission. He just made a couple mistakes in there, got caught up. I still think that he has that dog in him. I still think he, he is a young prospect in this division. It's just... I guess Hione Barcelos showing the veteran experience in that fight. What do you think about this fight, bro? Yeah, man. I definitely felt like Christian Quinones, he, he definitely he used too much juice in the first two rounds. Um, I think he didn't respect Hione Barcelos, and neither did anybody come in into this fight because we thought he was old. But Hione Barcelos looked good. And um, 
if we're going to go ahead and talk about Christian Quinones, this is a guy who's uh, one, one fight away from being back to the regionals. So it's tough. Next fight, guys. Got the pick correct, but I got the outcome wrong. Manel Torres defeating Chris Duncan via submission. Very nasty, very nasty submission there that he had against Chris Duncan in that fight. And Manel Torres looking very impressive, someone to look out for. And I'm definitely betting him in this next fight, bro. What do you think about this fight? Oh, yeah, man. That dude, Manel Torres, he is good. He has knockout power. Now he's shown that he can take you down. He's shown that he can submit you. Next fight, guys, got the pick correct, got the outcome correct. Yasmin Yarogui defeating Sam Hughes via decision. That was an easy call. That should have been my lock of the card, to be honest. But we all know around here that I do not bet on women's MMA. I'm trying to stick with that, stick with that rule because women's MMA is so unpredictable. But in this case, that was an easy call. Yasmin Yarogui going over Sam Hughes. What do you think about that fight, bro? Yes, that was actually an easy call. That was actually my last leg of the night to make me a, a um, plus, I think it was a $300 or something. So, so I was happy. It was pretty good. Um, so you can't beat it. Yasmin Yuregi, she was doing what she had to do. The bet was Yasmin Yuregi to win third or decision. So after the third round came in, it was just a cruise. Next fight, guys. Got the pick correct, got the outcome correct. Man, Francisco Prado's a tough dude. He's got a chin on him, and he can take some hits. Daniel Selhuber, really good jabs, really good boxing, uppercuts, leg kicks. He did it all in that fight, and he messed him up. He he really dominated that fight, and that was an easy pick, too. What do you think about this fight, bro? Yeah, man, Selhuber looked good. I feel like he has that tall man's defense just quite a little bit. Um, Francisco Prado is tough as hell, tough as nails. Um, and if he was uh, going to jail, he'd be suited because you ain't beating him up. You ain't going to take his dinner. That dude, Francisco, he did what he had to do, man. Um, I thought that the doctors would have stopped it because of the cut that was under his eye, but uh, above his eye and under his eye, he had like five cuts. But um, now the doctor kept it rolling and decision. Next fight, guys. He was my lock of the card. Cannot believe this happened. I'm talking about Yeo Rodriguez losing to Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega was out for about a year due to that ink um shoulder injury he had. And his last fight was to Brian um to Yeo Rodriguez. And he came out there, bro. He lost the first round, but after that he took control and dominated that fight, got the submission. Yeah, so um I took the difference of the money that I had made. It was like maybe thirty dollars or whatever. And um, I took it and played Yair Rodriguez and Brandon Moreno decision. Uh, not decision, but the fight to go to decision. Yair Rodriguez shit himself, if I'm being honest, because he had the fight won uh, in the first round. He had him rock and wobble. Brian Ortega even uh, hurt his ankle. And I just thought, I'm like, he's he's not going to win this fight. And But then he surely showed his grit and his determination. But well, Ilya Tapoya is going to knock him out, though. It's all good. I like T-City, though. Bro, he proved me wrong. He looked like his old self before that shoulder injury, and he might give he might give Tapuria some problems. You never know. He just uh, might because you can't. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you never know. Next fight, guys. Got the pick wrong. Got the outcome wrong. Brandon Roy Val going over Brandon Moreno in a very close decision fight. I mean, Brandon Roy, Roy Val did win three out of the five rounds. Um, Brandon. Moreno, he was looking good a couple rounds, but unfortunately he lost, and Roy Bell's back, back at it, man. He's back at in the championship picture. Yeah, man. Roy Bell looked good. That's raw dog. Um, I you know had him, guys, too, in the beginning, bro. I had him in the beginning, and I got snapped. <laughs> you sound happy about that. Why are you happy about that? I'm not, because... Uh, my rule is, bro, if I'm going to stick to the pick, I'm going to stick to the pick. I'm not switching that. I don't care. Well, I won't, I'm not giving out early looks no more. All right. So that was the recap, guys. I went a seven for five. How'd you go? How'd you do? Um. Yeah, I went um, eight for four. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. So similar, similar records. I should have went 
like nine for three or something like that. I should have surely went nine for three because I got robbed um, with the um, Victor Altamirano pick, but it's all good. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. This is CJ UFC Picks, The Smoke Sesh, along with my co-host, Gibbs. Make sure to check him out, Sports Fanatic Gibbs on YouTube, and make sure to like this video, subscribe, Make sure to turn, turn on those notifications, comment on the video. We give you free picks, free bets, free underdogs, and free locks each and every single week right here on this channel, CJ UFC Picks. Last night, I did pretty decent. I went 7 for 5 on UFC um, Fight Night Mexico City. And how'd you do, Gibbs? How'd you do last night? Yeah, I went 8 and 4 couple of split decisions that, you know, we thought would have went our way, but it's all good. As you saw in the beginning of the video, our recap, that was the recap for UFC Mexico City. And tonight, we're going to break down UFC Fight Night, Rosenstruck versus Gaziev. Fight of the year. <laughs> How'd you feel about this card, bro? Yeah, it's going to be something crazy, man. You know, I feel like we're going to get a lot of finishes out of it early on. And then um, maybe on the prelims and on the main card, we're going to absolutely get some finishes. So pretty good card from that aspect. I mean, it's a lackluster card. Let's be honest, bro. I mean, Rosenstruck versus Gosliev in the main event. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking about that, but at least it's at the apex. At least it's an early card going down on Saturday, March 2nd, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So early card for you guys that live up in the Northeast. I'm grateful for that because I don't got to step into one in the morning, man. Thank God. But Back before <laughs> before we do the breakdown, before we do our picks, like I said, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like the video. And most importantly, make sure to light one up. Got a blunt rolled up already on deck. Got some beaver tail on deck, folks. Getting zooted around here. What you got on deck, bro? Yeah, I got that Tropicana. I feel like it's that Tropicana every week. But, hey, man, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, brother. Y'all should check that out. Definitely check that out. Definitely check out the Beaver Tail, the Tropicana. Sounds good, bro. Next time I go to the dispensary, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that for sure. But let's get right into it, folks. UFC Fight Night. Rosenstruck versus Gaziev going down from the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Let me present my screen. One moment. All right, folks. There it is. Fight of the year. UFC Fight Night. Rosenstruck versus Gaziev going down on Saturday. Oh, it just went out again, bro. Hello? Yep, there it is. All right, we're back, folks. Sorry, technical difficulties. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Claudio Roberio going down in the men's middleweight division. This fight is going to not go in the distance. Clister and Leroy Duncan, 9 and 1. Carter Roberio, 11 and 4. Christian Leroy Duncan winning the last four of his five fights. Carter Roberio winning the last three out of his five fights. Not really going to break this, this fight down, guys, because we all know who's going to win. Christian Leroy Duncan, all day, he's going to win by knockout, TKO, or DQ. I think he's got him in all aspects of this fight. Um, he's got him in the grappling. He's got him in the cardio. He's got him in a knockout. And I think he's going to be having the better chin as well. Who do you think that, who you got in this fight, bro? Hey, CJ. Shit, you broke the fight down perfectly. Hey, man, we don't got to make this more, more difficult than it has to be. This is the first leg of everybody's parlay. Give me Christian Leroy Duncan to knock this nigga out. And I have to. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on YouTube, bro. <laughs> Next up, we got Louis Razabob versus Al Kareem 
Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi. And it's gonna be a good fight here, man. If we're gonna be honest, if we're gonna look at the tell of the tape. Lewick, he's 33 years old to Kareem's 28. Um, and I feel like uh, yeah, man, this guy Lewick, he's he's getting up there in age. But um, hey man, to be honest with you, he's he's been showing that he's aging like wine. Um, in his last fight, he did lose to uh Mateus Rebecca. But that's but that's Mateus Rebecca, though. Come on now, which I expect. So I just feel like, you know, Lewick is gonna go and come in here and he's gonna show Sawadi a lesson. You know, Sawadi is young and he he does have Palestine. Um, you know, he does have that Palestine flag behind him, and um they're gonna be really hyping this guy up. You know, but I gotta go, Louis, and I, I I might regret this because I'm be seeing all the hype and all that because I do feel for those guys in Palestine. But you know, we're just breaking the fight down here, and I just feel like Louis Razabov's gonna win it by decision. I don't see no one going out. What do you think, CJ? I think Al Sawadi is gonna come in here and show people that he's UFC ready, he's UFC caliber, and that winning streak is no joke. I think he's got better speed probably better cardio um i think this fight is going to a decision though i'm staying away because i think he is debuting if i'm not mistaken um give me abdul kareem al sawadi my confidence level is about a five not very confident and i'm staying away from this fight sounds good next fight guys scheduled in the men's bantamweight division we have javi bashra versus Amen Zahabi. Javi Bashra undefeated at 14 and 0. And Amen Zahabi is 10 and 2. Javi Bashra winning all of his UFC fights so far. Amen Zahabi has the more UFC experience, but I think Javi Bashra has more speed, better grappling, better wrestling, and better cardio. Amen Zahabi might have a little bit more power. But he's 36 years old, and Javi Bashra is an up and up and coming prospect that so far is doing pretty good in, in the UFC, and I don't see that changing here. So give me Javi Bashra by decision. My confidence level is a 6.5 out of 10. Put him in that parlay with Christian Leeway Duncan. Hey man, sounds good to me. You got the Snow Leopard here versus Amy Zahabi. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't say that this is one of the most strategic fights that you will see on the card. Is this the most uh, jam-packed fight where we'll see action? Maybe. Both guys are capable of some, of some knockouts. We've seen Eamon Zahadi knock Draco Rodriguez out, and we, we, we've seen Basharat knock guys out. I feel like um, Javi Basharat's one of those guys who just um, – he doesn't want to fight because he's undefeated. If he was, like, 14-1 and – He'd be trying to submit guys all the time because he wouldn't give a fuck. He'd be like, you know what? I'm done trying to protect this. Oh, I'm going to go out here and get me a bonus tonight. So this isn't going to be that fight. This is going to be uh, Jav- Javi Basharat by decision. It's going to probably be the most juiced method of victory you ever see because Amos Zahabi is just – he's just too low output, and he's not going to be able to land the shots that he's looking for versus a guy like Javi Basharat. This isn't Ricky Tercios here, so – yeah, man. I'm going to go ahead and go Javi Bajorat by decision. And like my boy said, that is the second leg of that parlay. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next one. It's going to be Vinicius Oliver versus Yanni Gamori. Yanni Gamori versus Vinicius Oliver. This is actually going to be one of the better fights on the card, I must admit. So you got Vinicius Oliver, who's 19 and 3. Giannis, who's um, um, he's 12 and 2. And honestly, this guy, Oliver, he's coming off uh, the Dana White's the Tinder series. He had that nice little TKO versus uh, Victor Madrigal, and that was pretty good. Um, and after that, you know, he's been pretty uh, unactive since then. Giannis Gamori, you know, he's coming out of a uh, loss five months ago versus William Gomes. And William Gomes has shown that he's pretty good because he had uh, took Francis Marshall's O, so he's shown he's not no scrub. Um in a fight like this, Vinicius Oliveira, he just has too much volatility that he's going to be bringing to the table here. And then if if Giannis Gamori, if he starts shoot panic shooting, he'll find himself in the choke. And um, 
Yeah, Vinicius Oliveira can finish you in so many ways. So I have to go Vinicius Oliveira by stoppage. I'm going TKO or uh, submission. This fight's not going decision, folks. We're on the same book on this one, bro. Vinicius Oliveira winning inside the distance. I agree with you on everything you just said, so I'm not even going to go over my notes because you basically just stole them. <laughs> so give me Vinicius Oliveira inside the distance. Um, thinking about betting him, I'm not sure yet. Got to see his lines. I haven't seen the lines for these fights yet. I'm assuming he's a favorite, but we'll see if I get there for betting wise. But for a picking perspective, give me Vinicius Oliveira to win inside the distance. My confidence level is a 6.5 out of 10. Next fight, guys, scheduled in the men's middleweight division, we got Eric Anders versus Jamie Pickett. Eric Anders, UFC veteran, coming in at 15 and 8. And we got Jamie Pickett coming in at 13 and 10. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, stay far, far away from these fight from this fight, because both of these guys are unpredictable and both of these guys are not worthy of a bet, in my opinion. But for a picking's perspective, we all know that Jamie Pickett has lost the last four of his five fights. Look at that. Losing to Josh Fram, that's not a good loss. Losing to Bo Nickel, Bo Nickel is a beast. Losing to Dennis Tullian by knockout, not a good loss. And losing to Kyle Dawkins, bro, come on. His last win was two years ago to Joseph Holmes. And Joseph Holmes is pretty trash, in my opinion. Eric Anders at least winning the last two of his five fights. Losing to Mark andre Barrio, winning against Kyle Dawkins. Losing to Jung Young Park. Losing to Andre Muniz. And winning against Darren Stewart. I think he's going to win this fight. I think this fight is going to a decision. I don't think anyone is going to get stopped. I'm not betting this fight. I might just bet the over. That's the bet to make, in my opinion. Give me Eric Anders to win by decision. My current, my confidence level is a six. Yeah, bro. I actually agree with you there. So this is a fight that one could say that this is an absolute stay away. Because you look at the teller to take, Jamie Pickett, he has a five-inch reach advantage, and he's the taller man, um, and he's the younger man. But honestly, Jamie Pickett is just one of the worst fighters that we've seen in a long time. He's one of these guys that um, he's shown that he doesn't know how to use his range. He's a guy who's shown that he's not durable. He's shown that he had he's a fish out of water whenever he's uh, got his back on the floor. He has no get-up game. Jamie Pickett is a sheep. And um, honestly, I can see how nobody could bet this fight, but I could just see myself plugging my nose and be finding myself on the Eric Anders side because there's no way, there's no way where I see him losing because – He's uh, Eric Anders is the better wrestler. Jamie, like I said, Jamie Pickett doesn't know how to use his reach. So he just doesn't, he's, he's beat. It's like, it's like whenever you're playing chess and you lost your queen and you lost your two bishops, it's, the game's over. Eric Anders, give me a decision, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I see Eric Anders stopping Jamie Pickett on Saturday. So that'd be, that'd be something we can come back on and see who was right. So next, 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 next yeah, next up is um what we got. So next up we got Raul Rosas Jr. versus Ricky Tercios. Um so 19 years old for Raul Rosas Jr. That this guy is super young. Um Ricky Tercios, 30 years old. Um I feel like Raul Rosas Jr., you know, he, we were supposed to see him fight last week, but he had the stomach bug or whatever was going wrong with him. Um I feel like he's supposed to win this fight. I had him in a parlay. That was my last leg. So <clears throat> they had to cash me out. I was like, well, there, there goes 80 bucks right there. I had Roller Rosas Jr. beating this guy, but now I'm not betting this fight because of, you know, the unknowns, like what was wrong with him. And you just never know because if, if we're going to be honest, though, this it, this is probably even playing field because a guy who's 30 years old, not saying Ricky Tercios is old, but 30 years old, he's had a couple more weight cuts in his in his uh, back pocket than, than Raul Rosas Jr. So this is long story short. I would stay away from this fight, guys. But um, give me Raul Rosas Jr. I don't I'm not putting a method of victory. I don't know. It's just too many things unknown what we can measure. So I don't know. Maybe CJ has more nuggets for us. What you got, bro? I don't like that last minute. 
withdrawal that Raul versus Jr. did last week or yesterday because the fight was just supposed to be yesterday at Mexico City. And now they're going to Vegas. Ricky Tercios came from um, not the Contender Series, but the other show. That was uh, Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, so he, he's – that's his, like, stomping grounds is the Apex. Um, I know that Raul Rosas Jr. was at the Apex for the Contender Series, but R- Ricky Tercios has more experience in that cage. He's got more UFC experience, and he's fought the tougher competition. I think this is going to be similar to the Raul Rosas Jr. Christian Rodriguez fight, and I think Ricky Tercios is going to win by cardio. Yeah, have better cardio and more output. I think Ricky Tosios is going to win. I'm not going to bet the money line, though, because, like you said, a lot of uncertainty in this fight. But Ricky Tosios is my pick. Next fight, guys, scheduled in the men's <clears throat> bantamweight division. We have Umar Numargomedov versus Bekthat Almakan. I'm a con, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> Umar Nurmagomedov, undefeated at 16 and 0, 28 years old, 5 foot 8, 6 9 inch reach. Bekza Almakan, or Almakan, 17 and 1, 26 years old, 5 foot 7. This is going to be an easy call for me. He's making his UFC debut. Umar Nurmagomedov hasn't fought in a year. But he's a beast, in my opinion. He is someone to look out for. He's part of that famous Nurmagomedov name. He trains with um, Khabib. And he's got really good wrestling, very good grappling. He's got power, good submissions. And we haven't seen Bexaw at all in the UFC. Bexaw? Who the hell is Bexaw? Whatever how you pronounce his name. I'm totally feeling this dude. Give me Umar Nurmagomedov. He's another lock of this card. That's the that's the part that you guys want to make right there. Christian Leroy Duncan, Umar Nurmagomedov, and who was the other guy? Um, it was Nurmagomedov. Um, I don't remember. Shoot, <laughs> we I got an already guy locked in. I check my phone after the show. So yeah, that's a, that's a three legger. I'll find out before the show. But definitely before the show ends, definitely give me Umar Nurmagomedov. Confidence level is a nine. Who are you going for, bro? Yep. So, yeah. So I'm going to Mar Nurmagomedov, but I feel like this is a real fight. This is a real fight, folks. Uh, Betcat, this guy Almakan, this guy's serious, man. He has serious bombs in his hands. He has 13 knockouts. He's no losses. His one loss comes in stoppage. It was a submission to um, some guy, Lulu or Yulu or something. It was a guy, a Kazakhstanic guy. But, um, yeah, man, this guy's number one in Kazakhstan. Um, this is a real fight. If um, if if the matchmakers uh, are mad at Umar, I can understand it because, you know, this is this is a guy, if, if this guy was making his UFC debut, Versus a can, he would be a minus 700. It's a real fight. I'm going to Margamadoff by decision, but I, I just think there's a world where Umar gets clipped early and he's having to fight from, from the back foot the whole fight. But um, yeah, man, um, it's kind of a crazy fight. But we'll, if we're going to move on, I, it's Matt Schnell versus Steve Ursig, folks. Um, as I'm waiting for wait for us to get it up. Steve Ursek versus Matt Schnell. And it's gonna be a good fight. 16 and 7 for Matt Schnell. Steve Ursek 11 and 1. Um, and yeah, Steve Ursek coming off a really good win versus Alessio Costa. And, and that was good because now he's um he's a ranked fighter now, man. Um, he beat David Dvorak. That was pretty good. Matt Schnell, he just got grounded, pounded by Mateusz Nikolaou about a year ago. He took a little time off. And then he had the win versus Suma Darzi. That Suma Darzi win, that was the, the comeback of the year um, in 2022. So that was pretty good. Um, and then he lost to Brandon Roy Val guillotine choke. So in this fight, I just feel like Steve Ursek is the strike a cleaner striker. Um, he has the better ground game. 
And um, yeah, Matt Schnell, a guy who's 34 years old in the flyweight division, that's not a good sign. Steve Ursag, a guy who has a chin, who took he took a lot of big bombs from Alessio uh, Costa. He actually got rocked a couple of times, but in this fight, I don't see Matt Schnell rocking anybody. He couldn't he couldn't rock my nephew. So go ahead and give me Steve Ursag by um, I'm gonna go ahead and go submission. He's gonna get him down and tap him out. What you thinking, CJ? I think Steve Ursag is one of the most dark darkest dark horses in the UFC, bro. Steve Ursag is so freaking good. I like Steve Ursag. I like Smash Nell too, but I think he's a little washed up now, right? He's 34 years old, so he's getting up there. And he's lost the last two, almost the last three of his five fights because that no contest with Rogerio Bonteron. I don't even think he's in the UFC anymore. He lost to Brandon Roy Val. That's an excusable loss. And he lost to Matus Nicolau. That's an excusable loss. He won against Sumer Darji and he won against Tyson Nam. Those are very solid wins. But Steve Versick hasn't lost in the UFC yet, bro. He won against David Dvorak and Alessandro Costa, as you just mentioned. Steve Orsek got better boxing, better cardio, better movement. Probably going to be faster in there as well, better foot speed. So give me Steve Ursag. He's another guy that I might bet for sure. Confidence level is a seven, bro. Next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's flyweight division. We have Alex Perez versus Mohamed Makayev. Alex Perez, 24 and 7. 31 years old, 5 foot 6, it's 68. Lagging, it's lagging real bad. Mohamed Makayev, 10 and 0. 23 years old, 5 foot 7, 70 inch reach. I'm going with Muhammad Makayev. Real guys. bad, bro. Muhammad Makayev is my pick. How about you, bro? Hello? Hey, yo, CJ. Hey, yo, C- yo, shit was lagging real nope. bad. Hello? Hello, hello? Yo, yo. Can you hear me? That was. Hey, you there, bro? Can you hear me? You can hear me? It's lagging. Oh, there, there you go. Yes, I can hear you now. My fault. All right. Um, you, I'm, I didn't hear your breakdown, but I already have my breakdown ready. I said Muhammad, Ka- so, Muhammad Makayev is Alex my pick. Perez, a guy who's coming off two back. Oh, it's lagging again. It's not me. It's Hello? not me. Check your shit. It's not me. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Sorry for the technical difficulties, folks. I don't know what's going on tonight. You can hear me? Definitely on us today. You can hear me, though? Can... Oh, yep. There you go. It just, it just came back. It's not me, though. It's you. It's me? It's not me, bro. Is it me? Bro, shit, man, my shit is moving. My shit's been moving. I, I, that's how I, I, that's how I indicate if it's me. My bad, guys. I'm saying Muhammad Makayev is gonna win this fight by submission. That was my pick. Yeah, um, yeah, it was doing a little robot thing. So, um, yeah. So no, bro. This I'm glad that it, it did that on this fight, guys. To be honest with you, this is the easiest fight to call on the card. Muhammad Kaif by decision. He should get a he should get a submission. This one of them fights is like Ian Gary. He should get a submission, but let's be honest. The, he he always plays too conservative. He he acts like, oh yeah, man, I can't lose my O. It'd be the end of the world if I lose my O. And I would get that. Nobody wants to lose, but this is another guy who's undefeated and he never wants to lose his O. That's why we'll see probably, you know, Raul Rosas Jr. trying to get a stoppage tonight. But um let me, go ahead and give me Mohamed Makayev by decision, and that's that. Um, let's you, go ahead. And you heard you heard my pick, though, right? Yep, I heard you. All yes, right, sir. All right, cool. All right, cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got the co-main event of the evening, and that is Vitor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. In this fight, one can say it's not going to go the distance, <clears throat> but I can see it going the distance. But I could also not see it going a distance <coughs> as I'm cough. Sorry, y'all. So 
if we're going to look at the records, 10 and 0 for Vitor Petrino, 10 and 4 for Tyson Pedro. And um, before I was doing breakdowns, I used to have a nickname. I used to be disrespectful. I used to have a nickname for uh, Tyson Pedro because he doesn't have a nickname. I call him Tyson the Can Crusher Pedro. And the reason why is because let me go ahead and go over his wins real quick. Ike Villanueva, Harry Hunsucker, and Eton, uh, Anton Tocali, which that was probably his, his best win to his career. But if we're going to look at his losses, uh, Mer uh, Mer Mercio Shogun Hua, no disrespect to Shogun Hua, but he's a has-been at that time. So how can you be losing to him? And if we're going to talk about Modeskis Bokowskis, Modeskis Bokowskis was coming off a, a knee injury, and he still lost to him. So in this fight, Vitor Petrino, a guy who has bombs in his hands, um, so does Tyson Pedro, but they're not as technical. One could say they're both not technical, but Vitor Petrino has shown that he can show more responsible defensively than Vitor, than uh, Tyson Pedro can. And I just see Vitor Petrino getting a stoppage here. So I'm going Vitor Petrino by submission. I can see, I can see uh, Tyson Pedro not going all the way out cold. Then I can see him getting a submission. So yeah, let me go ahead and get Vitor Petrino by uh, submission. What you thinking, CJ? I think Vita Petrino knocks this dude out in the very first round, bro. Mm. He, he's another lock of, of mine on this card. Tyson Pedro's chinny. He doesn't like to get hit a lot in the chin. And I think Vita Petrino um, connects to the chin, bro. He's getting night-night. I don't think this fight is going past the second round, bro, to be honest. The under 1.5 is also a really good play for this fight. Um, give me Bitty Petrino all day, bro. My confidence level is an eight. He's another good par parlay piece. Next fight, guys, is the main event of the evening for UFC Fight Night Rosenstreak versus Gaziev. Fight of the year, folks. Fight of the year, I'm calling it now. Scheduled in the men's heavyweight division. We got Jorinzio. Rosenstruck versus Shamil Gaziev. Yorenzio uh, Rosenstruck. He is 13 and 5, 35 years old, 6 foot 2, 78 inch reach. Shamil Gaziev, 34 years old, 6 foot 4, 78, 78 inch reach, and he's undefeated at 12 and 0. I think this fight is going to be close, guys, because we got Shamil Gaziev very early. Um, into the his UFC career, and Rosenstruck definitely has more experience. Definitely fought the type of competition, and he does have that death death touch, folks. He does have really good knockout power, but he he did lose the last three out of his five fights, losing to JLT and Ameda, winning to uh, against Chris Dawkins, losing to Alexander Volkov, Curtis Blades, and winning against Augusto Sakai, Shamil Gaziev undefeated so far, winning his contender series fight against Greg Velasco and winning against Martin Boudet. And here's my dog of the card, folks. I think he's a dog here in this fight. My dog of the card is Jorinzio Rosenstruck. I think he's going to win this fight. I think Shamil Gaziev's O is going to go away. And the reason why is because he went to a decision With this guy right here, I saw this fight, Kirill Karnalov, and I don't think he's that great. But before that, he's he's stopped all of his fights, but I don't think he's going to stop this fight, folks. I think Jorizio Rosenstruck's experience is going to come into this play in this fight. Give me Jorizio Rosenstruck as my dog of the card. My confidence level is a 5.5. Yeah, so... This fight is actually more intriguing than it's getting credit for. <clears throat> and I, I, let me just put that out there. Yeah, should this be a main event? Fuck no. But 
could could I see this being on the main card now that brothers got like two stoppages now? Absolutely. Biggie boy, Jorginho Rosenstrike. He's 13 and 5 coming in here. And like um like bro CJ alluded to, he's fought the uh, higher level of competition, and that's by a landslide. He's fought the, the one of the hardest punchers of all time in Francis and Ganu. He got his O taken in that out outing. <clears throat> Gaziev, a guy who's um he doesn't stay in range for too long. And um, we've shown and we've already seen that Jorginho, whenever he has a guy who will close the distance on him, um, he can get it. So I just I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I had uh, I had a uh, Shamil Gaziev to, to, to get his old taken against Martin Budat, but then I was like, oh, he actually shown better cardio than what I expected. I just feel like if Gaziev gets on top of you, it's gonna be night night. I'm going Shamil Gaziev to win by grounded pound TKO, and that is the official pick of the card. All right, cool, cool. So fight doesn't go a distance either way, bro. That's what I'm thinking. So that was the breakdown. That was the picks for UFC Fight Night: Rosenstruck versus Gaziev, going down Saturday, March second, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Early card. Make sure to tune in. We don't miss a card. We don't miss fights. We don't miss picks around here, folks. We're here each and every single week. CJ UFC picks my dude, sports fanatic Gibbs. Make sure to check him out. Make sure to give him a like. Make sure to give him a sub. Make sure to check us out. Subscribe to this channel. Like this channel. Check us out on all of our social media platforms. TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. Facebook. We're all over the place. CJ UFC picks. Sports fanatic Gibbs. We're out of here, folks. Any final, any final words, bro? Hey, man. I appreciate everybody for being here. CJ, I appreciate you as always, bro. You that guy, bro. Solid picks. Hey, bro, we coming for the top, bro. Like like bro said, man. Um, We're going to be back after this card. It's going to be Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera. I got some, I got some heat for y'all on that card. I won't say too much, but I that appreciate card everybody is for watching. Back. Bro, that card is stacked. And that's an early lean, bro. And that's all I'm going to say, bro. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck it, man. You know what? I said I wasn't going to no early leans. Early lean. And no. No cap. No, no cap, better, be, better cardio. I swear to God, I think I, I'm, I think do I'm gonna say. Homework. Do your homework, guys. We're here next week for <laughs> UFC 299 breakdown. We're gonna drop it early. Let's go. Thanks for joining. We're here next week. CJ UFC picks. Sports fanatic Gibbs. We're out of here. <laughs>